Все бачу чудово, спасибо. 55 секунд. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Andriy Shevchenko, and on behalf of Ukraine Media Center team, uh, I'm glad to welcome all journalists here at Ukraine Forum, welcome all journalists who tell the world the truth about our fight for freedom. And our today's guest is Alexander Motuzian, spokesman of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Alexander, what are the news from the front? Good afternoon, dear friends. I'd like to share with you information about the Russian military aggression against Ukraine. Information as of noon today. So the enemy has been carrying out an offensive operation in the eastern area of operations. The main aim of the enemy is still the same, which is surrounding the group of Ukrainian defense forces and taking full control over territories of Donetsk, Luhansk, as well as Kherson oblasts and ensuring resilience of the ground corridor to the occupied territory of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. Russian troops have been gradually increasing the intensity of their offensive action in eastern Ukraine in all directions at the same time, and the highest activity at the moment is observed in Slobozhanshina and Donetsk directions. In addition, there have been signs of the aggressor preparing for even higher intensification of combat activities. This is supported by some preparations of the enemy. For example, in Central Clinical Hospital of the Balaklia district, beds are prepared and an additional field hospital has been prepared. And in the Russian city of Rostov and Don, in the territory of Military Clinical Hospital, there have been additional refrigerations uh, developed to keep dead bodies of the dead military. Several words about the operational situation. The enemy's rocket and aviation strikes continue against both military and civilian targets all over Ukraine. In particular, the tactical aviation of the uh, air and space forces of Russia has flied at least 33 times to hit targets in Kharkiv and Donetsk oblasts. Russian long-range Tupolev 22M3 bombers have flied 32 times, including at least eight times for bombing Mariupol. We cannot exclude that uh, sea-based cruise missiles will be based from sea, uh, from Black Sea by Russian ships. Now information by areas. In Slobozhanshina, the enemy's group from the 6th Army of Coast Guard, Baltic Fleet, Western Military District and Northern Fleet continues aviation strikes against Kharkiv and shelling Kharkiv by artillery. In the Zoom direction, the enemy has been using the 1st Tank Army, 20th Army of the Western Military District, 35th Army and 68th Arm Army Corps, as well as paratroopers. Uh, is carrying out offensive action in Izum Barvinkova and Izum Slyansk directions. Russian occupational forces continue their illegal activities in occupied territories in, Hers in Khersonsk, uh, in Kharkiv uh, Oblast. In particular, from Kupinsk and other towns and villages, people have been forcefully deported to Russian Federation. The aggressors also uh, disseminate fake information that Kyiv, Kharkiv and Zaporizhia are uh, taken. In Donetsk direction, units from so-called so 1st and 2nd Armed Corps, as well as the 8th Army of the Southern Military District, 5th Army, and the 95th Tank Division have been carrying out active combat action along the whole 
front line. The aggressor has been making aviation strikes, airstrikes and artillery shelling. The enemy has focused its key efforts on the offensive action in Leman, Severodonetsk, Papasna and Kurahu directions in order to take full control over Rubizhna and Papasna and combat reconnaissance towards Liman, Slavyansk and Barvinkova. The enemy also continues airstrikes against Mariupol. The invaders have concentrated their efforts on blocking our units around Azovstal steel factory. Also some part of Russian troops has been moved to Papasna and Novopavlovsk directions. In Zaporizhia, around Zaporizhia, the enemy has been rearranging its groups, increasing its firing capacity in order to continue offensive towards Veliki Novosilka. In Tavria direction, the enemy continues its demonstrative actions and maneuvering in order to fool around Ukrainian troops and prevent them from moving to other directions. Also, the enemy continues to replenish its uh, reserves, uh, fuel and lubricants. In South Bulgaria, the enemy has been using units from its 8th and 49th armies as well as 22nd Arm, Arm Corps. Uh, has been acting in order to improve its tactical situation. The enemy continues firing against our units, rearranging its troops, increasing its firing capacity, strengthening its uh, engineering equipment and trying to replenish its ammunition. In Volyn and Polissa areas, there are no significant changes in the situation. Some units of Belarusian armed forces continue implementing assignments to strengthen the border of Belarus with Ukraine in Brest and Homel oblasts. At the same time, we cannot exclude that the enemy would conduct some provocations in order to accuse Ukrainian armed forces. Also, there is still a threat of rocket strikes by the enemy against military and civilian infrastructure in Ukraine from Belarusian territory, from the Republic of Belarus. Also, as our intelligence has learned, in an airfield in Brest Oblast in Belarus, 130 kilometers from its border with Ukraine, there have been six airplanes of Russian tactical aviation. Also in Mahilyov Oblast, 170 kilometers from Ukrainian border, there has been a division of Iskander uh, tactical missiles deployed. In Siversk area, the enemy continues shelling against areas bordering Ukraine. In particular, there has been artillery shelling around Kindrativka, Katerinivka, Svarkova and Bilokopitova. It is being done in order to uh, restrain Ukrainian defense forces and we expect that the aggressor will continue such tactics. Now about Black Sea and CF Azov areas of operations. Black Sea, sh uh, Black, uh, sea fleet ships in Black Sea and CF Azov continue rocket strikes against Ukrainian territory as well as doing reconnaissance and providing fire support to their troops in the coast. Also in the Black Sea at the moment there have been three carriers of cruise missiles, caliber type cruise missiles, their total launch capacity is up to 20 missiles, 20 rockets. According to the information of the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine, over the last day, uh, air defense units of Ukrainian air forces and Ukrainian ground forces have hit 10 targets, including one airplane as, and nine tactical UAVs, Arlan type UAVs. In Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts, over the last day, our brave warriors have repelled 14 attacks by the enemy, destroying uh, 14 tanks, 7 artillery systems, 28 armed vehicles and 14 cars and trucks. The total losses of the enemy have been shown on this slide. Today, the general staff already published those data. So uh, that's all information I have by this time. Thank you for attention. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. Any questions? You're welcome. Uh, your microphone doesn't work, I think. No, it works. 
sorry, the interpreter cannot hear, the interpreter cannot hear the question. The interpreter cannot hear the question, sorry. We know that the Russian Federation has already been carrying out so-called hidden mobilization in some regions of Russia and actively uh, hiring mercenaries for, in, uh, for combat action in Ukraine. Also, so-called mobilization continues in temporarily occupied towns and villages of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts. There, people are just caught on the street. They're given some uniform and sent to the front line. We are aware of that, too. But whether Russia is to declare a full-scale mobilization will definitely depend on the military action in the eastern area of operations. So if the enemy fails to achieve its planned goals in the nearest future, this scenario is completely possible. We cannot exclude it. One more question. Sorry, just a moment. Please use my microphone. One more question. At the moment, Ukrainian uh, military is trained to use new weapons received from our foreign partners. Uh, what is the situation with this training at the moment and how many Ukrainian uh, people are involved in that? Thank you for this question. This is a relevant question. The preparations training continue. Of course, we are not to discuss any uh, scale and type of those activities, but I would like to reassure you that our uh, servicemen will rather quickly master the military equipment provided by our partners, and that equipment will be used according to its intended purpose to destroy Russian invaders and liberate occupied Ukrainian territories. Any more questions? You're welcome. Me? Um, my name is Frank Langford. I'm with National Public Radio from the U.S. I have a specific question. Um, are any of the American howitzers in action yet? And if not, uh, when will they be put into action? I understand your question. First of all, I would like to thank the U.S. government and partner countries helping Ukraine in its fight for independence. Your question is very specific, but as you understand the nature of those activities and all fine nuances of the defense operation in Ukraine are not to be discussed. But I'd like to reassure you that all weapons to be provided to Ukraine will be used in an effective way for our defensive operation. So I cannot tell you specifically whether a particular type of weapons has been used or not. I was reading the defense minister's statement two days ago on his Facebook page in which I think he effectively said, I just wanted to check this, that the Ukrainian military is becoming effectively a NATO army, and that is that it will be defending the eastern flank, uh, and it is now shifting from Soviet-style weapons to NATO quality, NATO caliber weapons. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's, that seemed to be his message. I think it's a very important point. Currently, in this Russia-Ukraine war, Ukrainian armed forces use the full potential of weapons and equipment. Both those weapons which have been used by the Ukrainian armed forces and weapons provided by our partner countries. We need weapons, unlimited quantities of weapons, because the Russian Federation has been using its weapons against us without any restrictions. Uh, it is running a completely dishonest war against us and uses uh, types of weapons which Ukrainian armed forces don't have. So we do need weapons and without any limitations, actually. And I can add that uh, in this particular post on fe Facebook, the Minister of Defense quoted that example of 155 caliber in artillery, which was not used by the Soviet army, but it is being used by NATO allies. And according to the Minister of Defense, uh, 
It was told that Ukrainian military has been now mastering that caliber to actively use those weapons in military action. That's it. That's the situation. Any more questions? My last question will be this. Uh, it's about Mariupol. Have there been any signs that the intensity of combat action is uh, lowering by uh, Russian invaders? so that some progress would be possible in arranging humanitarian corridors from that besieged city. As of now, the situation there is mostly the same. Russia has been blocking all humanitarian items from Ukraine. There are rocket strikes and bombing against the city and, 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 and the territory where uh, Russians block our units around Azovstal. The only thing is we don't see any ground assault, but artillery shelling is there and air bombing and rocket strikes are there by Russian military. They continue. So the situation does not change there as yet. Uh, so, any more questions? about the Donbass. You gave us a lot of examples of things that are happening in individual places. But overall in the Donbass, are the Russians making progress or are you holding them back? How would you describe that? I can describe the situation as follows. There are certain parts where the enemy has already taken taken control of. That's not a top secret. But you have to understand that there has been rather intense combat action. Our units run position defense and maneuvering defense there. Some towns and villages may change hands. Certain towns and villages or territories are not of strategic importance for Russian army, so there is no offensive action there. But as of today, we see signs that Russia has been increasing its troops in eastern area of operations. They are increasing the numbers of their units, and they uh, want to take as much Ukrainian territory as possible. As of now, their main goal is to get to administrative boundaries of Luhansk and Donetsk oblasts, as well as Kherson oblast. Thank you. Alexander Motuzanek, spokesman of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, thank you for this information. Now uh, we complete our schedule for today. Uh, all journalists are welcome to monitor our announcements. Thank you for working with us. Stand with Ukraine.